Hello, my sweet dear magical friends. Welcome, welcome to your weekly horoscope and teroscope with me, Natalie, spelled N A T A L E E. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure you have shared this with all of your friends and family because you know it's great for them and it's good for them and they need it. Let's open up this week for us all. We're going to be covering the week of Monday, September the 26th to the next Monday, whenever that is, October the. We're going to take it to October the 2nd. Okay, so as you can see, we have our little Aspectarian. Oopsie, wait a minute. That's what I wanted. I wanted the Astro Key. So just real briefly here, you guys know that down below on, on this column, we have all of the, can you see it? aspects in the very middle and that tells you the relationship between the planets as they're interacting then over here we have all of the signs it's going to tell you the character of how these planets are behaving depending on what signs that they're in and then all the way over here we have the planets themselves the glyphs for themselves so feel free to go back and reference the key the astrological key i'm going to switch us over back to our aspectarian okay so this week we have a lot of goodies lined up. It's honestly, I'm really, really, really excited for this week because of one aspect and one aspect only, if nothing else. I am of course talking about Mars and Gemini trining over to Saturn retrograding in Aquarius. And you guys know I am a very Saturnian person. So having the support of, of someone like a Mars and Gemini just goes so, so far when this energy works together with Saturnian energy, Mars, Saturn working together. I mean, anything can be built. Anything can be done. You can climb the highest mountaintop. You can push through the biggest obstacle. You can do whatever it takes. It can be done. And it's because these energies are exactly what you need to work harmoniously to get anything done to get your way to get what you want to achieve to accomplish you need the drive the motivation you need the will okay that's that mars energy and it's very heady in the sign of gemini and we're going to go into a mars retrograde we're not there yet not there yet though and you need something to Sorry. And you need something to take you beyond when the motivation runs dry, okay? That is called discipline. It is when you're able to continue doing something long after the desire to do it has left you. That's commitment, discipline, maturity. That's Saturn. So Mars is going to get you excited. It's going to get you to start something, especially Mars and Gemini. You could be starting on um, an option or something that was, you know, just like a lot because Gemini likes to have all the options. Gemini likes to have, you know, no pressure, no, you know, uh, I did the butterfly just going to all the different flowers, you know, that kind of a thing. So, you know, that's that's really cool and really groovy. And then, but this Saturn is saying, you know what, this is this is the good flower. This is the flower that's got long-term potential. It's going to increase, it's going to have a high yield over a long period of time. You know, it's it just makes more sense. And there is something that makes more practical sense. I like this on, and it, this is like the whole week. This is really what I'm focusing on for your horoscope. This goes exact on what Wednesday, but you're going to be feeling it applying and then you're going to have that three degree separational orb. So let's just say it's like the entire week. So everything else I'm going to be reading is in this context because I want you to use the absolute most of this juice and you have a lot of support too. Like you're building on the new moon in Libra that you just got out of on a Sunday. So this is a great week to get stuff done. Guys, we're heading, we're actually, because eclipses are effective Gosh, what is the actual, I think it's like 30 days or is it, oh gosh, don't quote me on that. Definitely don't quote me on that on a, on a Mercury retrograde, but it's basically eclipses activate at least like a month before and after the actual date because some people will have the eclipse date come and go and no big fanfare, nothing big, big, you know, catastrophic is happening, but it's the time we're in the, the realm, okay, of these um, eclipse windows. So you're about to go into a period of life where it's more like fate just like jostling us around and we have more that we're responding to um, and that is eclipse season those are like the faded changes the fated blessings the faded flushes of things out that we're that we're done with that we're just 
done with. Those are feelings, those are attitudes, those are situations, those are circumstances, relationships, it's all of the all life stuff. It's physical stuff too with the um, eclipses being in physical signs, you know, Taurus and Scorpio, you know, it's quite, quite a big flush of stuff. So I really, really like to have this Mars Saturn trine. I think you guys should be very optimistic no matter what else is going on this week because like I said, you have that will with that Mars and Gemini, but especially Gemini can lose interest pretty quickly or get you at least need more stimulation. One of the like if any of you have and Mars and Gemini, you just stimulate, they need like a lot of stimulation. You just stimulate them like 15 different ways at the same exact time. Have a, everything going, okay? And they'll be very happy. Tickled pink. You might even get some giggles out of them. And that's when you know they're very happy. So, you know, you keep it tickled. What sounds like? But, you know, just the, the Saturn energy will, it's like keeping, I really walked into that one. It's like keeping the home fires burning with that Saturn. The Saturn is more fuel for the flame. It's more um, sustaining of an interest. It's it's something that's um, a little bit more like everything that you're putting the effort into in these areas of life, Gemini area of life, Aquarius area of life. You can get so much done. This is what you want like out of the entire year. You want help <laughs> with Saturn because no matter what else is going on in the sky, Saturn sets the agenda. So everything else, it's like, okay, well, it does it literally with perfect, perfect would have a clipboard because that is so Saturn. Saturn is like, you know, every all every everything else in the sky lining up and say, okay, Saturn's like, you know, how is that gonna fit in like that? How is it gonna go in here? Saturn sets the agenda. So to have Mars, I just can't overemphasize this enough. I'm just really to think about it. Um, and it's just, it's going to get a lot done. It's going to get a lot done. You're going to feel a lot better. There's going to be a lot of mental relief when you do this kind of stuff, okay? Like I said, that Saturn energy is sustaining. We're going to have the moon being in. Okay, let's just go ahead and dive in. Let's just start with a different color. <sighs> Sparkly one. <laughs> let's, Wow. Monday, 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 the 26th of September. So, like I said, we are applying in that beautiful aspect to Mars trying Saturn on Wednesday. On Monday, the moon is in Libra. Happy new moon in Libra. It's trining over to that Mars and Gemini, what I just talked about for many minutes straight. Also trining Saturn, retrograde in Aquarius. The sun is opposing Jupiter, retrograde in the sign of Aries, and... Mercury retrograde is conjuncting Venus and together they're both in Virgo. They are trining over to Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. I am calling Monday seeing what's missing. The fact that you've got these, um, you have this one opposition with the Sun Jupiter and that's part of your new moon, but then you also have Mercury retrograding picking up Venus and they are trining over to Pluto. This isn't the first one either. Let's see, 26. Watch my Mercury retrograde video. I went through all the dates, all of the aspects, and the trine to Pluto is one that I know. So the other dates for this, August the 22nd, Mercury was direct, 26 degrees of Virgo. September 24th to the 26th, that's this past weekend when Mercury retrograde picked up Venus, picked up the moon in Virgo. And then October the 2nd, Mercury is going to be at 24 degrees of Virgo, opposing Neptune, but trining over to Pluto and squaring Mars and Gemini. So this is the nicest one. <laughs> Out of all of those three that I listed, this is the, the sweetest one. So whatever, whatever's trying to be transformed, okay? So relationships relationship attitudes your relationship to relationships discussions values they all have to change these are very healthy upgrades though you know pluto if saturn sets the agenda pluto is just making sure that everything is honest and real and no pretense and very like raw pluto would rather everything and everyone be real raw and honest and real and sincere and truthy rather than anything superficial so your mind is being transformed 
your values are being transformed, your relationships could be transformed, and you could even have some discussions or it's just some ideations. Even if you're not talking to people, you're probably just, all of us in these areas of life are thinking about it, thinking very intensely about these things. Um, you know, with that trying to Pluto, that is just, Pluto energy is always going to show you your shadow. It's going to show you your compulsion. It's going to show you what, what, where the energy just runs and you don't do anything. You don't have to try. You don't have to, um, you know, put any effort into it. You, you're just zoning out in the news cycle or you are just, you know, real frustrated with your, I don't know, maybe it's like you, you do those bobbin lace things and you just even that's like a pluto thing any a thing where there's like an intense concentration you know making lace by hand dear god you know jeez louise or any anything like that we're doing that in the virgo area of life the capricorn area of life and it's it's just changing but it's because you're like really really focused into it and you're getting a lot of penetrating insight so you know it's like you're able to see something a lot deeper on this energy the first couple days of the week better than at other times in your life, at other times in the year, at other times during the months. Now is a great time to get that really over the weekend, I would say over the weekend, especially because the moon was super dark. People were probably really like scared and really, you know, I always say like, don't tweak out about your life on a dark moon. We do anyway. It's kind of like that infinite potential, but I mean, I like that kind of thing. I'm born on a new moon, so I've got that like, yeah, you know, <laughs> very fresh but you know monday i like it moon in libra which is saying that you know we're seeking balance so even though yes we're very intensely focused and really thinking i mean we're really you could be designing an entire room in your mind in your house and just going so <laughs> balls to the walls like planning every little thing out that kind of a thing so you know the Mercury Pluto doesn't always have to be serial killer aspect. I mean, you know, I, I write about serial killers as a, as a screenwriter, but you know, it, it can also be. That's how I've noticed it playing out in my life. I'm a Mercury Pluto person, so you know, it's like that's so funny because I didn't sleep last night. So, and you know what? I wonder. I around the days around the Kazemi, like I never really sleep, but it's like I don't even want to sleep, and I don't fight sleep. Like I. I had this weird moment where I laid down and I meditated for like maybe 30 or 40 minutes, but I never went totally, um, I never went totally asleep. So I, I, I would say even when I was meditating, I was still in theta, like I wasn't even in delta. But Mercury, Pluto, so if you had trouble sleeping over the weekend, I mean, maybe it's because you know, maybe guys, this is so random, but you know what, guys? This is my first time double washing, just, just for all the hair enthusiasts out there. I did not know that rinse and repeat was a real thing. That feels amazing. It, it really, it, it feels, it's revolutionary. I'm, I'm always late to the club, but guys, wow. Okay, just... <laughs> All right, back to you guys. Let's take you to Monday. Okay, so like I was saying, the moon in Libra, seeking balance, you know, conditions, circumstances, it's very equanimous. Trining over to Mars and Gemini, trining over to Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. It's it's just like we're we're even though we're very intensely focused on something, emotionally, we're going to still have the benefit of being pretty detached from the situation. So, you know, it's like you're you're redesigning your entire room in your mind but you're not getting emotionally disturbed over the things you have not maybe figured out yet the little little things like oh i gotta pick up that and i gotta pick up that and i do it like you're not freaking out about it you're just thinking about what you need to balance a situation or a room or a scheduling thing or doctor visits or you know what i'm saying so it's like moon trining mars trining saturn that's actually is that going to be let me see trining 19 it will be a grand air trine so that's going to be gorgeous it's going to be absolutely gorgeous so this grand air trine you know you're going to it's all going to be fine <laughs> you're going to figure it all out you're going to figure out the room or the relationship or the 
um, logistical thing and I would expect people to be quite supportive and working really well together. It looks like people are on the same page and you know whatever you are discussing Monday is probably you know and this, let's also that Sun Jupiter opposition is part of the new moon that we're building on these first couple of weeks last week of september first week of october that is always any opposition is going to bring something very pointed very sharp to the surface of your awareness to the surface of your attention so sun jupiter there's clarity of purpose there's true beliefs that are coming up for you and you also see what's missing you also see what maybe part of your relationship beliefs or part of your ideology or even your own um, beliefs about being an individual the process of individuation you can see what's what's needed maybe you need more distance in a relationship maybe you need more intimacy and more closeness in a relationship maybe you know what i'm saying so you're gonna it's gonna be very acute it's gonna be very um, it's gonna be pretty clear and you're gonna have like a, a like I said the clarity of purpose but not just like your own purpose as an individual but the purpose of relationships themselves you know is there is, is, is it is there everything we got out of this is it did we do what felt karmically asked of us in this relationship did we do all is there unfinished business is there you know like all, all of that kind of stuff so you know, this can also be very beneficial. This can also be um, an expansion of a relationship, an expansion of an individual. How do I say this? An expansion of an individual freedom, an individual sense of freedom, kind of like that. Because it's a balance, so balancing the tension of needs of relationship versus individual needs versus, you know, um, you can't be super like self-righteous and we're going to talk about this later in the week when you enter Scorpio, um, but you can't be super like non-compromising and you have to know when to compromise and you have to, everything is like your own personal perception and you're never going to be able to think bigger than whatever you're thinking and feeling in the moment. So if you're upset, that's not the energy to act on or to make decisions on. You know what I'm saying? But okay, so that's that's Monday. I, I feel like I feel like I'm rambling today. Yeah, definitely rambling. Okay, Tuesday the twenty seventh. Here we have. Um, okay, so basically on Tuesday the moon's gonna be void most of the day, and then they're going to enter into Scorpio pretty late like this is like around five five six o'clock on tuesday so most of the day the moon's gonna be void so keep a loose schedule and then oh okay so monday was seeing what's missing tuesday i'm calling non-emotional retrace so that void moon it's gonna just be like lingering in the air it's just gonna be heavy it's gonna be a little bit maybe unresolved or it's it's like I'm calling it non-emotional retrace because it's like that Sun Jupiter and this intense thinking of of Mercury and Venus and values and Pluto and maybe there was communication um, back and forth that everyone was really comfortable with on Monday with the moon in Libra trining over to Mars and Gemini flirty Mars and Gemini and stoic Saturn retrograde in Aquarius so Tuesday I'm calling like you could have like a vulnerability hangover that's what I call it like that's like the Capricorn like oh I was vulnerable with you and, and it's the next day and I totally regret it you know like <laughs> know it's like silly to say but you know you might be that when the moon does ingress into Scorpio it's like a totally different vibe so there could be self-doubt you could have um, ego and pride issues come up maybe someone was feeling really like jolly and jovial on Monday with a, like a flirty, lighthearted, in a lighthearted way. And then maybe you're overthinking it on Tuesday. So just try to check yourself. Always check yourself. Always. Don't ever be afraid to check yourself. That's the most important part of life is checking your own self. So before anyone goes to project onto your relationships or your past and whomever so and so what and what or the future or the media or governments or whatever your backyard whatever 
Stop all of that. Stop all. I am trying to help you because I love you all to pieces. Check yourself first and detach from all of that because this Scorpio stuff goes one of two ways and it's every month for a year and a half that we're gonna have these big flushes of this kind of stuff. So this um, this Scorpio moon, it can go the self-doubt, it can go ego, it can go pride, it can go to you feeling like the world is suddenly a hostile place, it's suddenly a hostile environment, it's suddenly eat or be eaten, it's suddenly dog eat dog kind of a world. I get it, totally get it. But you want to flush those feelings because that's all programming. That's all something like that. That's some. That's something activating. Maybe you were making some great strides on Monday, and you were living in more of the North Node in Taurus, or you were overcoming some insecurities, or you were thinking very progressively. But then Tuesday, that subconscious programming is like just yanks you back a little bit. So check yourself. Just watch how you're. This guys, I'm 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 sharing this because it's helped me. It's benefited me personally. I'm like a very compulsive, like I, I can just act, like I can just do stuff. <laughs> you know, like I just I just go for it. I'm not afraid to make a fool of myself. I just go do it. You know, I'm very I'm very good at that. So to learn to calm myself down, to calm my little body down and just go slower. That's another thing about Mercury. Retrograde is actually just going slower. I've saved so many things by just physically moving slower. So with this moon in Scorpio, I want you guys to do the same thing, except like just watch your emotions and check yourself because you, if you wake up in the morning and you're just stressed about your day and you're just thinking about everything you have to do you're going to be a, you're going to have a shit day you are setting the tone for a very high anxiety stressed out day you're never going to feel like you're on top of it you're never going to feel like you're on top of anything because you've already loaded up the program of the day with like the past and all this stuff hanging over you so it's kind of like that so basically I want you to focus on checking yourself and seeing if there's anything that's like anxiety or compulsiveness or negativity or, you know, ego slights where you're just, your feathers are ruffled super easy or the, the news is making you super scared and depressed or, and I know, I, I, I know, I know, I know, but guys, how many incarnations have we been on this earth? How many wars have we seen? How many wars have we been in personally? How many wars have we personally died in? How many famines have we seen? How many plagues have we seen? The Justinian plague, the gross one with, okay, I won't even get into it. I put it up somewhere on my YouTube community page about the Justinian plague, how disgusting it was and how depressing it was for just years. Like it just, so, you know, yeah, you can go into the fear and you can go into the negativity and you can get sucked into those wormholes, but Scorpio energy could also be intense gratitude that transforms you. I mean, think of like Gandhi, you know, you can take all of that really intense Scorpio energy and be the Phoenix, be the freaking Phoenix that just gets reborn. You, you burn it all up, but you burn it all up. You burn the feeling you, you, you go through hell to come out the other side. You don't stop and go back. That's you not conquering the fear. So basically Tuesday, that's why I'm calling Tuesday the non-emotional retrace because we need everyone to try. And that's why I admire you guys because you try. Trying is what matters. So you at least try. Because then you're going to keep trying and eventually you're going to have a breakthrough. So don't get discouraged because any little little bit of discouragement on the Scorpio moon is going to be just so dramatic and you're going to go overboard with it. So don't let that retrace be super, you know, focus on the gratitude for Tuesday. Then Wednesday, oopsie, Wednesday, we've got my favorite transit of the week. We have the Mars in Gemini, right over here. Come on. I guess it was in 
Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Mars in Gemini, trining over to Saturn retrograding in the sign of Aquarius, 1919. So I love it. I absolutely love it. I love this support. It's a beautiful aspect and it's easy. It's a trine. So it's, you got to take any little crumb that Saturn throws your way and make the most of it. Okay. You hit it. You, you do it. You, you make the absolute most of it. Make your gains, put in the effort, do it with or without motivation, but this will probably be really easy. It'll probably be something that you're really into. It'll probably be something that you can firm up, you know, just going on this energy for this week, going like following your passions, going and learning about what you're, especially if you're learning, if you're, if you're guided to learn about something, if you're curious about how past life regression works, if you're curious about whatever, increasing your financial literacy, whatever it happens to be, put in the effort and you're going to go, you're going to get so far out of it. I'm calling Wednesday, play the long game because there's that happening, but then there's also the moon crossing. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Perfect. Okay. So it's also the moon, as you can see over here, the moon crossing over that south node in Scorpio. So this is where the flush happens. This is where you feel the fear and the pit of your bones and maybe you shit yourself or something, you know, maybe you just shit a couple bricks on the floor and maybe you're like, oh my God, you know, but you know, then you did it and you're done and you can move on. I don't know why that came up. Sometimes, um, it's, it's, a, it's in some, sometimes when people, anyway, that's, that's gruesome. So I'm calling Wednesday, play the long game it's in one of my scripts. I know. I know. It's it's absolutely. If anyone has any algal energy, <laughs> especially combined with my Mercury Pluto, like I just I just I can I can just write really dark. <laughs> okay, so th that we're not. That's not. There's no algal. I'm not, there's no algal. We're talking about. Okay, play the long game. So I'm talking about moon crossing over this south node in Scorpio. So flush the fear, flush the ego. <sighs> Watch the vlog, how to heal and move on. I'm linking it in the description box below. So it is there for you. Bookmark it, come back to it later. It is the technique. And even if the technique does not resonate, I hope that you will have at least been entertained by the vlog. So it works though. It works if you use it. It works if you apply it, if you are consistent and if you keep trying, it actually works and it's free. It's right there on YouTube in the link below description box. So the feelings of fear that come up, the feelings of possessiveness, the feelings of paranoia, the feelings of egomaniacal egos, um, ego megalomania, um, you know, all of those dark underworldly, you know, scorpionic things, let those feelings come up you're talking to them, these programs, when that feeling comes up, you identify with it because you, you haven't practiced this enough. But when you start to be consistent with your practice of checking yourself and, and doing this technique and being the awareness behind the awareness, then you don't identify with your feelings. You don't identify with your resentments. You can let it go and you can alchem do the actual alchemization of those feelings and you are free of them. And that's the whole point. Pluto wants you to be free of yourself. That's why I'm saying like all of this stuff of like, it's not about it. It's not about it. Okay. Even if tomorrow sis you you woke up in society we were cloning our own bodies I, and i had natalie clones in the fridge and i was eating off my own meat and i was cannibalizing myself and i was harvesting my own meat and i was harvesting my own organs and um you know there was no green leaves anywhere and it was just the water was privatized and the internet's not free and it's the worst thing ever you know even if that's the case you're still gonna die and you're still going to be released from your terrestrial existence. And you will realize that the whole thing was an exercise. Okay. There's a lot more to this universe than just this little planet spinning on our tilted little axis, perpendicular to the plane of the ecliptic. A lot more happening in the universe. Okay. A lot more happening. So let it go, let it all go, okay? Pluto 
energy, Scorpio energy, wants you to let it go. Because you can't have ego and love in the same space. You can only have one or the other. It's either going to be ego or it's going to be love. It's not going to be both. It's not. It can't not be. So you have to choose. South node in Scorpio is going to be wanting to grip and hold on to resentment and hold on to the feelings. But then North node in Taurus wants to be more trusting. Wants to trust in their own skills, talents, and abilities. Wants to feel like they can trust in themselves. And wants to have a little bit more faith. And feel a little bit more tangibly secure. But that emotional destabilization can be happening. But it's it's really, oh, I'm talking about this so much. It's like, it's, it's not going to last long. So that's Wednesday is play the long game. So yeah, whatever feelings come up, you know, and even if this is manifesting outside of you, maybe it's somebody else that's like really shitty with you or someone is really rude to you or you get some weird, you know, comment or message or something like, let that go as fast as you possibly can and get back to you maintaining your eye on the prize because remember you have this beautiful Mars trying to Saturn energy that you don't want to waste a moment of because Mars is going to be retrograde it's going to be a whole thing so take care of your own moments no one's making you feel any which way if you feel like someone's making you feel some which way, whether it's someone on TV or someone in your household or someone in your life, you're using them to reaffirm some kind of subconscious or conscious addiction you have to that feeling. Oh, you feel competitive with somebody at work? You're using that person to reaffirm your addiction to jealousy and resentment and comparing yourself to other people. Um, feeling inadequate, whatever happens to be. And I think it's pretty appropriate that I'm a very Saturnian person for me to say that to you guys because that is taking full responsibility. Responsibility and accountability, self-possession, dignity, self-worth. That's what Saturn wants from you. So Saturn and Pluto working together. In this case, it's, you know, Saturn and Mars working together and then the moon in freaking Scorpio and the south node working on a more subconscious um, way with you on Wednesday, okay? Okay. Thursday. Thursday, September the 29th. I'm calling this day Sweet Kisses because we have Venus moving into the sign of Libra. Venus in Libra is masculine expression. Venus in Taurus is the feminine expression of the planet. So in the Libra, this is very heady. It's very masculine. It's very, I love this energy. Honestly, you guys, it'll be even, so the moon's going to be in Scorpio. Moon's still in Scorpio, opposing Saturn retrograding in the sign of Taurus. Yes, we know that. Also squaring, T forming a little bit of a T-square-ish with Saturn in Aquarius. So, you know, we, we get it. We've, we've been there before. But honestly, that Venus in Libra is so, is so nice. I really feel like you're going to feel that, that shift. And it is going to exacerbate some of this other stuff with the... Is this over here? Okay. Oh, oh, okay. So it is going to, you know, emotionally circumstances are not going to be like totally ideal circumstances. Here's what I'll say about Thursday. Leave lots of room in the schedule. Circumstances could change to show you how you need more resourcefulness and freedom. But honestly, it's freedom from, now that's Scorpio energy. For some, that's, um, that's a big ego. For some, that's a lack mentality. For some, that's extreme possessiveness. For some, that is, um, like reputation stuff or you know for some it's a sexual issue for some people this is going to be like a huge sexuality thing with that Scorpio stuff um, you know what I'm saying so it's going to be and then it's going to be different for everyone so I've I've talked about this at length in my in my Patreon but you know <laughs> activating this T-square there's definitely going to be 
some situations um, coming up to kind of just push you in the direction of um, how would I put this pushing you in the direction of like breaking into something that Uranus and Taurus like that's a triple conjunction area so that Taurus area of life since what was it like the middle to the end of July is when it got super big you know till now has just been trying so it, and it's it's a, it's gonna continue on it's not like nowhere near the end of it so this opposition is going to bring something very clear to you about where you do need more freedom and where you're excited for freedom now that square to saturn is saying that you know we're we, it's like measured measured progress measured steps so you know there's that so we have lots of room in the schedule you know because there could be actual circumstance things that are like you know changing like maybe you planned to do one transportation thing like you're going to run one errand you're going to do this one thing and all this other stuff comes up and you're like all over town you're talking to all these different people and you know this person's helping you you're hiring these people for this and it turns into this whole production and that spices up your day a little bit it also makes you be a little bit more responsible and to, to do things according to protocol and it did maybe stimulate some fears. Maybe you were worried about getting somewhere on time with all of that happening. You know, so that's just like one example. But let's talk more about that Venus because the Venus is the best part. Look at that. Venus newly entered the sign of Libra. Here's what I'll say about Venus in the sign of Libra, in the masculine sign of Libra. It's very heady. It's very sapiosexual. It's very mental. And it is very masculine, which means it is a little bit more pointed. It's, it's, it, it seeks out that balance whereas Venus and Taurus is just like let's just eat good food and you know make love all day and just enjoy life you know it's way more like indulgent whereas Venus and Libra is just so much more refined it's like oh you know we're not going to eat with the the with your with the nice clothes we're going to get you know, we're not going to you know or this we're not going to mess with the upholstery or like stuff like that. You know, it's a like Venus Libra is a little bit like it, it could get a little bit tied up in the mind that way where they may not be able to fully relax because it's a little bit more of an anxiety thing too. Here's what I'll say about Venus and Libra. If any of you are dealing with a, um, a Libra sun moon rising, any Libra energy at all, you're going to have to be psychic. You have to be psychic with these people. You have to be psychic. And you have to have a strong sapiosexual mental connection with this person. This is going to help. That Venus and Leap is going to help. And you're going to have to anticipate their needs. And you're going to have to know what they want. And you're going to have to let them not say what they want. You're just going to have to do it. You're going to, you're, you know, but better yet, you're going to, you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have little fleets of fairies coming out of nowhere. <laughs> and doing all of the things that the Libra wants done without anybody saying anything ever and just oh now it's just magically so so that's what you're gonna need so by you're gonna need to be psychic with this energy and you're gonna need a fleet of magical fairies by Thursday the 29th for the next four weeks while Venus is in Libra yeah that's what I have to say about that. That is what I have to say. And if you do those things, if you can do that and be that, everything will be fine and your Libra will be totally relaxed and they they won't have the, 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 the movies. You pick the movie, even though it's really their pick. It's like a perfect example. Oh, what do you, what do you want to see? Do you want to see... Um, Casablanca or Nanachka, and you know that they want to see Nanachka. Um, oh, whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want to see. You can't say Casablanca, you have to say Nanachka. You know that your Libra likes Greta Garbo more than Ingrid Bergman, but maybe you're in a Humphrey Bogart kind of mood, doesn't matter. You know what your Libra is saying when they're saying whatever you want. <laughs> they want you to say what they want, but they want you to want it. They don't want to say, I want to watch Greta Garbo and I want to watch, um, oh, what's his name, Melvin, oh man, Melvin, Melvin something. 
Back in the good old days when a siren was a brunette and not an alarm. Um, but that you get what I'm trying to say. You get what I'm saying that they're gonna. They don't want to say I want to watch Nanachka. They want you to say you want to watch Nanachka, and that's the movie. That's all you. That's the only example you guys need for Venus and Libra. Everything will be fine. That's not that bad of a compromise, honestly. Amazing movies, amazing actresses. Is Ingrid Bergman Swedish? I think that might be both Swedish. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So it just go with their flow. It's not worth them going through all of the mental anxiety because Libra energy analysis paralysis. Libra energy can get very, very stressed out. And if it's that easy to just put them at ease, just do it with this moon in Scorpio, like let go of your pride, let go of your ego, let go of, um, I don't know, maybe that's for some people, maybe that's like a righteousness thing, like Scorp, like it's a fixed sign, like maybe some, for some of you, some people in your life that's like super righteous and like, this is black and white, this is right or wrong, it's blah, blah, blah. you know, if it's like you wanna rant about politics and your Libra is like, their eyeballs are twitching, like just, for a sec, you know, like just have a whole meal without bringing up something that's going to stress them out. <laughs> I think it's pretty simple, um, but I also have a, I have a, a, an affinity. So you know, just just be chill, just be real, and it you'll you'll have a fine Venus and Libra, like Sun and Libra too. Like it'll be fine. You'll have a fine time. It'll be fine if you can do that. The psychic, be psychic, and have the fleet of fairies. That'll just do everything. You'll be, you'll be good to go. All right, let's talk about the next day. A Friday. All right, Friday. I'm calling expansion. Expansion. Friday's called expansion because the moon is now in Sagittarius. Some relief. Some relief. And it's trining over to Jupiter. Jupiter. Ju Jupiter retrograde in Aries and it's sextiling Venus in that Libra energy. So it's kind of funny because it's like, you know, the week starts with the moon in Libra and then there's like this retrace with two days of the moon in Scorpio where everyone's going to be like, oh my God, I'm too, oh my God, I'm changing. And it, it, watch the vlog, How to Heal and Move. I talk about that. I talk about how progress isn't like this I talk about how progress is not like this like straight line that you just like go through. Progress is like you go forward and then you go back a little bit, but it's like two steps forward, one step back, and then you go, f I do it a lot better. I write that on, I do the whole animation. But it's like, it looks like this staggered, it looks more like that when you grow. So that's kind of how I see that. Like, you know, Monday you do your growth and then t maybe Tuesday, Maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, you feel that retrace where you're like a little vulnerable and you're like, oh, I'm scared. But then here we, where are we? We're at Friday already. So Friday, you have that that expansion that you want to grow again, that you're, that you're ready to go further. You're ready to go a little bit further. And you want to go bigger. You want to go wider with that trying over to Jupiter retrograde in Aries. Maybe you feel like you finally have some more of your wind beneath your wings like you've got that wind in your sails and you've got your gumption back maybe you just had to go through a temporary little dark night of the soul <laughs> tuesday wednesday and guys like being a sun neptune person like i every day i go through some kind of spiritual rapture you know it's just like always something it's always something here so you know maybe it's going to be like that um sexling over to venus and libra due to supportive relationships that are making you feel like you can grow, you can expand, you can go wider. You don't have to be who you were 20 minutes ago. You don't have to be who you were yesterday. You have the supportive relationships that are the safe space for you to, that's why relationships need a little bit of distance. Now, not too much distance. Maybe you have a sinistry aspect where your moon squares their Saturn and their moon squares your Saturn. You have like double moon Saturn squares. That's gonna be something where it's like super close and then you feel distant and then there's these tearful reunions and then you need space again 
and then you miss each other and then you cuddle and you want space again you know it's like maybe there's just or it's like very serious you know it's got that like serious feeling where it's like this is this I like, got this is this feels different this you know Saturn feels different with people like it's karmic it's, it's a whole different vibe so you know you have supportive relationship energy on Friday that are that's that's saying run free be free I su I support you being free you know fly I'm still here fly you know Kind of like that. So Friday is pretty simple. And then Saturday on the first, happy first of October. I'm calling Saturday, October the first, coming through, and it is. We have Venus in Libra opposing Jupiter. In oh, now at the two degree fifty nine minute mark, Jupiter in Aries. So Venus opposing Jupiter, you guys, that's nice. That's like a, you know, chef's kiss energy, Venus. Okay, let me, let me, I'm calling it coming through because that's sweetness, right? That brings something sweet to view. Any kind of opposition, and you have two important oppositions on Saturday the 1st. There's a lot being revealed, really being brought up. You have Venus, Jupiter, and then you also have that moon in Sagittarius opposing Mars and Gemini. So, though, that's, that's big views, big, wide views, and it is squaring and Neptune retrograding in the sign of Pisces. So, this is kind of like a, not a big bubble being burst, like a, a preconception. It, this is almost like if you're nervous about something and you're like, oh, it's, it's not as bad as I thought it would. Like I was watching, when was it? It was, it was these Mercury Neptune oppositions as part of your Mercury retrograde. I talk about it on the video. It's pinned to the top of the YouTube page. One of those for me, I don't remember what day it was, but it was on this Mercury opposite Neptune where um, that's when I had the nail in my tire and I watched the YouTube video and I got the kit and I fixed it myself and I was Neptune about it for negative where I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna fuck this up. Like, oh my God, like what if I make it so much worse? And then what happens or what, you know, all of that kind of like, that's where people will go with Neptune. Like you either imagine the absolute worst and you start emotionally embracing that potentiality of you and start to create that timeline for yourself or you go higher vibe Neptune, which is, it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of um, being able to, to really kind of self-check, self-control, self-regulate, to use Neptune to create your reality and to really generate the, the better feelings without being delusional, without being grandiose, without being a martyr, okay? So I'm telling you, there's really, really, Neptune's really freaking hard. So um, with this square though, I feel like it's gonna be like, the example I just gave, like with the, I did the whole thing, tires great, it's what, it's fantastic, it went so much better than I thought, so much more self-confidence after the fact, and I, re I actually really enjoyed it, I really thoroughly enjoyed working on my own vehicle, I just, I, I like, I like it, I like that kind of stuff, and so it's, uh, it was really nice, and it, so this is probably going to be kind of like that, where a view is broadened for you and it's like very emotionally charging you up and it's probably just going to be very exciting now there is also that moon in Sagittarius going to be squaring over is that going to be it's going to be squaring over to Mercury and I, it is it is going to be a t-square it's going to be a mutable t-square so that moon in Sag is going to be t-squaring like this Mercury Neptune opposition. Oh my God! So has Mercury been opposing Neptune since August the twentieth? Maybe. Okay. So wow, that's a bit, that's quite a change. Quite a change indeed. So that's definitely perceptions being changed, and I'm not mad at it. I I I, I kind of like it. I I think I'd be very creative. So I would. That's probably great for writing or for imagining or just for like creating good stories use Neptune don't misuse your imagination going negative thinking the worst that is definitely misusing your imagination that's misusing the Neptune energy I want you to be excited to create your own reality 
feeling empowered. And you don't do that until you conquer your masculine energy. You don't do that until you conquer your Saturn. Well, I don't even want to say conquer Saturn. <laughs> I'm so humbled, you know, like, oh, but you know, once maybe you understand Saturn, lived and, and lived and breathed that's that Saturn energy. But don't worry about it if you haven't. It's okay, it's fine. You're gonna get through it. So on Saturday I'm calling it coming through. Now the only warning with this is that you might be feeling so sweet, things might be so great that this could be overindulgence. This is like and then with these mutable this mutable T square happening, that could be where you take edibles to the airport because you're so excited to fly. You're so excited for a different environment. And you take the edible and you fucking fall asleep and you miss your goddamn flight. <laughs> Mommy don't know daddy's getting hot. <laughs> At the body shop. You know, it's, it's just like... So it could be kind of like that. It could be like... Let's do it tomorrow, you know? Let's just chill. Let's just hang out, you know? So, you know, maybe just keep a loose schedule. Just try to take care of the details a different time. Make sure you, you double and triple check stuff because it's just little details. You won't even want to, you'll want to breeze over all that stuff. You'll want to put off new emails. You'll want to just kind of like explore and really take in the new sites and whatever this you know, adventurous little moment is. Okay, let's talk about um, Sunday. Sunday, October the 2nd, finally. I'm calling Sunday, October the 2nd, the full, complete picture, okay? It probably feels, it's the quarter moon in Capricorn. So now the moon's in Capricorn. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Moon's in Capricorn, so a little bit serious, a little bit more serious again. But here's the thing with this, it's a waxing, gaining in light quarter moon. So you're meant to push through some kind of discomfort. Or you're meant to push through some kind of obstacle. And guys, this doesn't even have to be something that's like so square shouldered opposed to you. This could even just be energy levels where you're just tired or you have a lot to do or people expect things from you. You know, it's like you probably feel like either the weighted blanket where it's nice and cozy and it's supportive and it feels like you're emotionally secure because of this weighted, heated blanket. Or it might feel a little bit like a burden and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I don't think it'll be like the Mercury Station Direct. Now you know where you stand. It's, it's the Station Direct is always, the stations that themselves are always very important so again in that opposition to neptune still so you know you know you stand you have the the picture you you see the thing and honestly you guys like we're we're gonna be talking about it but you know october has that last saturn uranus square and then there's gonna be I have it here somewhere give me a moment here like just the 20 i was just kind of like breezily looking through the rest of the 2020s and you know there's some you know we started the 2020s with the, the the capricorn stellium and you know 2021 the three hits of saturn squaring uranus but then saturn's going to be sextiling uranus in around 2025 and also late 2025 saturn's going to be conjuncting neptune and then there's like sextiles and trines through to 2027 and then in 2028, at the end of 2028, Saturn's actually going to square Pluto, and that's like a scary thing. <laughs> but you know, like think about that. Like January, beginning of January 2020, it was Saturn conjuncting Pluto, and then we're going to have that square Saturn squaring Pluto November 2028, and then 2029, Neptune is going to sextile that Pluto. So it's like, however, we're closing out this year. I just see this as sort of like these really big changes, acclimating to them. And then the next couple of years, yeah, we're gonna have Jupiter moving around, we're gonna have, you know, little things like that, but I'm kinda just, I don't know, sometimes I get like Saturn PTSD where I just wanna go look at Saturn and just like look at it and just see what's coming up so I can just deal with it, you know? Cause honestly, once you deal with the Saturn stuff and it's all the stuff we wanna put off, It's doing the taxes it's paying the parking ticket 
it's having the difficult conversation, it's doing like the hard decisions, it's doing the hard things, it's facing the harsh realities, it's owning our own fears of being grown up, it's owning our, you know what I'm saying? In, in Saturn's fear, it's not, I mean, maybe a little bit of it is Pluto, but Saturn rules fear. So you are gonna be run by your fear until Saturn just like scares it out of you or if you're always under it and then you're just a victim under Saturn transits. That's the thing, like people waste transits. We all waste certain transits and we, we're not, we take things for granted and um, you know, it always depends on like where we are at any given moment whenever any given transit is happening and exerting its influence upon us. Like the little godfather strings, you know? So, I don't even know why I went, I just, no, I went all the way there. Okay, we don't have to go there. Um, oh, the full complete picture. So now you know where you, oh, that's right. I was talking about the quarter moon in Capricorn. So this is just you know, a little quarter moon in Capricorn. It's a little emotional little thing. Now the moon is going to, this moon in Capricorn is going to square Venus and Jupiter. Let me just see. Yeah, it will. It will probably just earlier in the day. Nine degrees, nine, eight, six. Yeah, so like around the morning of Sunday. Yeah, like Sunday late morning, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So that moon in Capricorn is going to um, activate a T-square with Jupiter and Venus. Now, that doesn't look too bad to me, to be honest. Like, this is, I'm telling you guys, like, if you did the Mars-Saturn of this entire week, Mars and Gemini trining over to Saturn and Aquarius, you'll be fine for this quarter moon because sometimes a quarter moon is just like moving furniture around or just doing your makeup different or deciding you hate your entire wardrobe and forcing you to get creative and find some way to express yourself that you really like or that you really cherish or um you get so frustrated with the fridge you finally just clean your fridge out you throw all the rotten food and you, you know it, it's it's so you know i don't want to like tweak anyone out it, it's 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 going to be just something small something little like that and with Mercury Station Direct, like I said, you know where you stand, you know where, where everything stands, you have a pretty clear insight and view into everything. And, you know, that Mercury Kazemi Friday the 23rd, that starts the next four month synodic cycle of Mercury. So all I'll say with this T square with this moon, Venus, and But that moon, Venus, and Jupiter is to be careful of overdoing it because that can also be, you know, that moon in Capricorn is like you have like emails to get, you have things to schedule, you have things to do. You, oh, I forgot to put this at the very beginning, but I'm gonna put it here. Housekeeping. Okay, so Zoom, I have the extended plan, but it only holds like five readings or five sessions before I have to empty the cash so I, I can't be emptying it like multiple times a week so I mean I do now I have to I was gonna do another service but now I'm just gonna stick with zoom because it's easiest right now so you guys will have to download the audio and the video files of our consigliere sessions and our psychic tarot readings the very same day um, please download them when I send you the link they I, I always send them within like a couple of hours of our reading please download them that same day because I will have to clear the cash probably that day or the next day. And, um, and yeah, so, so make sure you do that. Make sure you take your, um, the audio and the video files and you download them from the Zoom. That's all. It's not a big deal. So, you know, it might be where you have to like do something like that. You have to empty the Zoom cash or something. And then you, um, but you want to go play, you want to do something else, you want to have fun, you want to, you know, do something way more fun, something more Venusian, you want to just maybe relax or you want to just talk about stuff or you just want to, you know, color in the coloring book or something, I don't know, but you want to, you know, so try to find an even, an even balance as the Venus and Libra would like to say. 
And that is, that is it, you guys. That is the week. Oh, perfect. 59, 40. Tarot time. Let's take a look at the tarot and see what message wants to come out for my loves. Mm. I knew it. Sometimes I do that just to make sure, just to feel it. But I know. This is actually for um, alcoholic beverages, but I, I don't. I, I really, I'm very quite, um, it's no bueno. It actually rips out and, and burns out holes in your etheric web. Why do we care? Natalie, what is the etheric web? The etheric web is, how do I put this, like matter, etheric matter. But it's, it's almost like, you know how they have like a lake at the bottom of the ocean? that um, it's got a different density, that water has a different density than the other water around it. So there's an actual lake that you can like, you know, that's there. It's kind of like that. So your etheric web is kind of like that. And it's a protective barrier that protects you from deep, 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 negative energy. So when you're, you know, cousin so-and-so is doing their dishes and thinking nasty thoughts about you and you're just like doing your gardening happy as a clam and then all of a sudden you start obsessing about this cousin so-and-so and you just start thinking about all of the mean things they've ever done to you and all of means and you don't know where this is coming from and it puts you in a bad mood and then you snap at your husband because they did something stupid and you would have otherwise forgiven them but you're in a bad mood so you didn't and it just messes up your whole day and then maybe maybe because you had some some you know mimosa before you went out to do your your things your your, your plant things that's a real life application it makes you more sensitive because you don't have that defense system it does a whole lot i, I put it i put that kind of stuff on the um tiktok but yeah you just especially if you guys do any of this kind of work like astrology um psychic tarot readings of course any kind of divination if you do pendulum answers if you cast the I Ching, if you do any of that for yourself, for others, you really, really, I just, I know I sound very like a mom, but you know, I just have to do right by my people because of all the spiritual love I have for all of us and the respect I have for all. Okay, Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Cups, Lord of the Forces of Life and Lord of Blended Pleasure. Damn, that's kind of cool. I know, that's kind of cool. I can't really see these. I mean, these pictograms are quite detailed. So, Wheel of Fortune and the Four of Cups. This is really nice. This is going from feeling. <laughs> She's showing me Wedding Singer. Um, the freaks over at Table Nine. It's like you go from feeling like an outcast to feeling very. Welcome, my lord your seat you know it's like well i don't know why i did igor from young frankenstein but you know you feel great you go from feeling zero to hero that's another thing maybe you're just gonna want to watch a tv show instead of doing the work that you've got to do this week The Nine of Swords, come on. The Lord of Despair and Cruelty. Why do I have that song in my head? It's so stupid. Mommy doesn't know who Dad is getting you. I'm sorry. Oh, maybe it's Mars and Gemini. I don't know. Actually, Venus and... Here's why it's worth it to just put your Libra people at rest because then they're funny. All that wonderful mental energy, it's not getting spun in crazy little Libra webs of anxiety. 
they're funny they're fun and they're they're i mean like belly clenching ab workout funny funny saturn saturn libra they could be so funny okay so what's going on with this nine of swords we're gonna open it up we're gonna open it all up open it all up I'm not taking all of that. I'm just taking the top part. It's the last judgment. Spirit of the primal fire. Judgment. Spirit of the primal fire. Um. Okay. I, I, I want one more. I do. Because that nine of swords is really tweaking. It's really tweaking out. Give it some time. Give it some time. And the Five of Wands. Ooh, he's got the ugly Lord of Strife. All right, we're done. You're done. You're done. Bottom of the deck, Ten of Pentacles, Lord of Wealth. And the Two of Cups, Lord of Love. And the Five of Cups, Lord of Loss and Pleasure. Five of Cups, the Two of Cups, and the Ten of Pentacles. You can't win them all. That Venus in Libra is probably going to feel... It's almost like um, your family relationships are wonderful, fulfilling. But your business relationships are aggravating and they're unequal and they don't want to work with you and they're like really anxiety driven. You know, it's kind of like that. Or you're, you're dating someone that's really great and the family hates you. Or... <laughs> Or, you know, your business connections are your most positive connections with other human beings right now. And the people you're dating are just so, I don't know, weird or something. So it's like, it, I, I'm kind of getting that overall vibe with this where, you know, you, you feel like there's some lack of fulfillment in some relationships, but then some other relationships are just easy, easy breezy. Beautiful cover girl, you know, really, really nice. So, mm. let's start opening this. Up. Potato chip jack. Okay, Wheel of Fortune and the Four of Cups. Lord of the Forces of Life, Lord of Blended Pleasure. Thank you, it's the Hermit and it's the Three of Wands. So someone here has to really tap into what's really valuable in life. This is not an answer you're going to find in a book or talking to someone else or, you know, it, even if something triggers that kind of a thing. So for me, I really love Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. It's a very short book. He's this psychotherapist who went through Auschwitz and survived and created his own logo therapy which is like meaning based therapy that if you have meaning in your life you can get through stuff so the first part of his book is his experience in the camps the concentration camps and then the last half of the book is his um this is his own system of psychotherapy it's like a meaning based existence so you know there might be some stuff you read or like something that like maybe triggers this you know but you still do the work you still do the emotional i remember when i was a kickboxing instructor i had a woman who was a psychotherapist and 
she really took out her frustration on the bags. I mean, she really, you could see it. And, you know, she would tell me that, you know, her, her people would come to her thinking that she was going to do the work, thinking that she was going to get in their minds and their hearts and like just do, 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 do. But, you know, and then that's what was frustrating for her as, um, you know, this, this person is that um, they didn't want to do it themselves. And that's really, sometimes with the hermit, it's a mentor, but I'm just really getting, even, even if there is a mentor or multiple mentors, you still have to do the work yourself. Doesn't matter how tall your grandfather was, you still have to do your own growing. So there's either a someone mentor like or there's just some kind of influence maybe it's like an ad that you see like just like driving around or something but it's like it's just something that expands you from the inside and it helps you really feel better about any kind of i don't know if that's like insecurity or rejection or um like fear of rejection oh my god i'm seeing ty from clueless oh she was so cute Brittany murphy was so cute in that movie um, but like, you know, or if there's any kind of like awkwardness or anything, like you're going to be fine. You're going to feel, you know, but you, you get it not from external validation, internal validation. That's where the power comes from. Internal validation, not vanity metrics, not, um, your, your family, you know, congratulating so and so at the family party and then looking over at you and saying, What are you doing with your life? or, you know, some crazy, stupid shit like that. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's internal validation. Internal validation. I'm telling you guys, you know what's so weird is this is why I say, like, we would rather understand than I feel like I have my own like, little podcast or I'm on some kind of a thing here, but I'm just like, but honestly, you guys most people are afraid to die isn't that crazy isn't that weird it's weird i mean it's weird for me it's people it's weird for for psychics and stuff like that but you know that's like most most people have a very real fear i mean it's the new york times the top two spots of what people are afraid of every year it's the same the top two spots it's public speaking and it's death. I'm not afraid of either of those, I guess. But really, people are afraid to die. And it's just weird because, like I've said before, there's things that, you know, I take for granted that I've always known that other people might take an entire lifetime to learn and vice versa. There's things that, it's so hard for me to learn something and it's hard for me to get it. Other people take it for granted that it's like, oop, they get it like that. You know, Woody Allen is this super accomplished director, and you know I haven't directed a bajillion films yet, yet, but I'm not afraid to die, and he's fucking terrified to die. Like, how crazy is that? You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's 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 just, it's 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 just it's just weird. Oh, that's right. So what I'm saying is that I want you guys to have that perspective. And the reason why I'm on the internet, the reason why I make TikToks infrequently and sporadically and do these, the reason why I push myself out into the canals of the interwebs and into digital preservation is to share my perspective in case it really, really resonates with somebody out there, even if it resonates with just one person one time. And I know that the more I put out, that the more chances it'll have to reach those people in the pockets of planet Earth, or maybe the solar system, who knows where this is going. But, you know, it's worth it and it's important. It's really important because I know it's a weird, strange perspective, consciously altering um, getting into altered states of consciousness and separating consciousness from your body, but it's a perspective that empowers you and it frees you from all of this terrestrial bullshit. I mean, if you're ready for that kind of freedom, if you're ready to really let it all go and truly detach and create 
from your quantum field, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like my video, send this to other people, friends and family, coworkers. They can benefit from it too. And it's, I know it's a unique perspective, but you guys are very unique people. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. That's a very hermit, you okay, hermity. That's what's this nine of swords? Lord of despair and cruelty. We've got the two of pentacles. We've got the knave of pentacles. She's showing. She's really bringing me down to this little vase. It, it's this. It's like the trials of Hercules or something. Okay, so this fear, this worry comes from taking some little things and kind of blowing it out of proportion. So this is almost like, it's a two of pentacles and it's the knave of pentacles. So there might be for some of you, not all of you, maybe for some of you, maybe it's with whom you're connecting this week where, what is it? It's like maybe you spend the last money in your bank account putting gas in your car on Monday and you don't get paid till Friday. You work a regular job, you don't get paid till Friday. You have whatever's in your kitchen, you have whatever gas is in your tank to get you from Monday to Friday. That could be some Nine of Swords, Two of Pentacles, Knave of Pentacles energy for those of you that are learning tarot and doing readings on your own. I get such great feedback from my people over on Patreon. Guys, okay. I can't, I can't, I've, it's been very, and it's weird because I haven't slept like in many hours, but I'm not tired Like, what's going on with me. Um, so yeah, so this, the, the nervousness or like the mental anxiety, don't worry about it. That's, you have to, if that, like that example, like that Monday to Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's, that's a good five days. You have to generate the feeling I have more than what I need. I have more than enough. I have more than enough. I can, I'm full of food and life and vital life force. I'm gonna have a great week this week. All of my needs are taken care of, like that kind of a thing. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, okay? That's really, that's the thing. Like, um, I don't know if you guys like remember any of this, but like in these, uh, the earlier videos, I'd get really, you know, noises distracting me and all that stuff. And then maybe it's like a little bit, you know, here and there, but it's it's not really like it really got under my skin before because I wanted it to be all perfect, right? Well, when you're doing energy work and practicing, oh, I have to show you my new setup for psychokinesis and telekinesis. Oh, it's raining. Um, I have to show you guys my new setup for psychokinesis and telekinesis practice. Um, Anyway, but when you're doing that, you have to stay focused. It's like Magneto, okay? Oh, another Auschwitz reference. That's weird. I don't know if he was, if it was a well, very long time ago when I saw the movie, but he was being taken by guards and his mother was behind the gate and he actually bent the wrought iron gate with his mind. So you guys have to take it a step further that like for... For instance, for, for me now, I, I, I don't need it to be these perfect meditative conditions. I don't need everything to be perfect in my life. I don't need it to be totally quiet in the room. I don't need, um, you know, even, even if I have a session and you guys are like driving and you're doing this, you're doing that, that's okay. That's okay. You know, I'm, I, it's, it's um, not like resistance training. It's just... You have to, but it takes practice. It takes practice to hold the energy, to hold your tone, to hold your frequency, and to pulse your frequency stronger than the environment, stronger than the stimulations, stronger than. For instance, you you meditate in the morning, you're real happy, you're you're honky dory. Um, then your 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 brother comes in, and he's you know complaining about traffic or he just 
was talking to so and so about so and so and it's real mad if and that drops your energy if you get mad with them to bond with them i don't know or um empathize with them whatever then that drops you and you get off of your equilibrium that's too easy that's too easy or if you hear something you see an ad you don't like or you see a commercial you don't like or that's too easy man that's kid stuff kid stuff and this is that uh, i mean i'm i'm saying that but i'm i'm kind of just thinking of my my patreon tiers so kings and queens we're, we're going to actually um have more stuff for kings and queens to activate reactivate your psychic ability and then there's empresses and empresses and then there's here friends and high priestesses so it's it's a progression when you're ready to to build up that kind of a psychic muscle so it's not just a psychic muscle it's also um, this kind of a thing so you know and it's not saying like you never worry it's not saying you never feel negative I mean oh my god I, I, I tell you guys all the time that I have like this compulsive like it why do I know so much about this because I try really hard because of what I do because of how I am and I have to come back and, and recalibrate myself throughout the day um, but it just takes practice and it takes consistency and I really recommend if anyone is really serious about it, of course, signing up for Patreon. And guys, the Patreon is as you are guided. I know that with South Node and oh, you can see it, but with South Node and Scorpio, that people are super um, fearful um, financially and fearful of um, not having enough, fearful of lack. And it goes. I we know it goes against everything that. Um, we talk about and everything that we teach and practice energetically so just know that if you feel that fear and there's a slack and you're like oh my god and your patreon is like the first subscription to get the cut that's also part of your journey it's also part of your spiritual adventure and everything is pure everything is as you are guided so you guys know that I am here to support and eventually we are gonna have a new system not on the patreon so i'm so excited i know there's so much like behind the scenes but you know it's all gonna be good stuff there's gonna be a lot of great support for you guys and you know but just just know that that's at play until next spring where people are really gonna feel um fears of lack with finances with money and it, th when that comes up the technique how to heal and move on it's in the description box below helps you of what to do with that feeling when it does come up because it's not like we're all just supposed to be like perfect little saints and never feel anything like that it's what you do with it it's what you make of yourself after that's the character what's this last judgment Ooh. it's the ace of swords Woo! Judgment with the Ace of Swords. I like it. Nice and sharp. This could be like a resurrection energy. It could be like a like an ex or someone coming back from the past. Or you could be dealing with a relationship that is very karmic and very heavy. And it has some kind of big truth that is um, a big conversation this week. Or it could be reconnecting with someone that's a karmic past life connection there could be some kind of deal or contract or but this is another very clarifying energy of like knowing where you stand the last judgment is it's, it's the coming out of the coffins and you know it could be really a conversation or a phone call or something that changes the level of vibration chain alchemizes the situation very victoriously i might add what's this five of wands this is a little bit of discomfort lord of strife it's just, it's not. three of chalices six of pentacles you need some new people in your life you need some new, you need more, you need some fresh fucking air, okay? Six of Pentacles, three of Chalices. To clarify, the Five of Wands. If you're in conflict with people this week, they're probably the same crusty old people that you had conflict with last week and the week before and the week before. If you don't have the room in the relationships to support their growth, that is going to feel like it's you're gonna feel trapped 
you're gonna feel like, you're gonna feel like you're in an impossible situation. You're gonna feel like there's no clean way out. You're gonna you're it's it's no no one that that's not fun. So you know it's don't be too Venus in Libra like that going bending yourself over backwards to um, just keep the peace. Then you hurt yourself to keep the peace, and that's how resentment starts. And then resentment builds, and then you get super ugly. Super, super, super ugly. So this five of wands, there, there's something, there's something with friends, there's something with groups. I honestly feel like there's some kind of rancid portal that is like a black hole and not a portal. Thank you. Yeah, you, or you might be just trying to figure out like maybe like friends, but also maybe just like your people, like who is a <laughs> practice that this week. And let me know how it goes in the comments below if you see people as like a black hole or if they're a portal of two way flow of abundance. That's that six of pentacles, what it's supposed to be, what it wants to be. And that three of chalices should have like a pretty good, I would say like boundary within the group so if this if this is a couple if this is a friend group if this is a tribe a community i've said it before i'll say it again i do what it takes i enforce the boundaries i need to to protect every unique individual within the communities that i create that's me being the mama Okay, that's me being, sometimes I feel like a bad mom, I know, I know, and, I, and sometimes I feel like a bad mom, but it's like, or like when Queen Elizabeth II in the crown, when she just like leaves her babies for like months and months, like, ugh, that sucks, you know, but we gotta be, mama's got a mama, you know, gotta, gotta tell you how it is, in the kindest, gentlest, most lovingest, supportive way possible, so this I think it's gonna be pretty clear. I think it's gonna be pretty. Clear. I think it's gonna be pretty clear where there's an equal flow of give and take, and where there's just like, and this is a five of wands. This is just like petty, like fighting about stupid little things. Like I was saying before about Venus and Libra, just, 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 just pick me the one. <laughs> it won't be that far off, you know. If, if they want, if they want. If they want to order the same, if they want you to order the same coffee drink as them, because they they want you to both taste it together at the same time, not from the same drink, from separate drinks, separate straws, but at the same, then just do it. It's like it's so simple. It's a, these little things, but they go so far, and then you will have very amenable energy. This five of wands is someone that's like, no, you know, this five of wands is someone that's, um, they're, they're making a mountain out of a molehill when they should just let it go, when they should just move on, when they should just talk about something else. Or, see, it's like, the, it's like a, the same, same source of conflict or there, there's something that always upsets this person. They, they're complaining about the same thing. That moon in Capricorn, that quarter moon in Capricorn this week, you guys, Capricorns, like we don't, I don't like to hear my own voice complaining about anything. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I'm sure no one else wants to hear it. So I'm just, I don't know, that's Capricorn energy though. We're very like, just get to the top of that mountain. <laughs> so it's so exciting. <laughs> now, you know, this Nine of Swords person, like, they, there might be some, um, they might have some runoff energy. Like, there might be some runoff energy in discussion this week, and you have to know the difference between if it's a black hole or if it's a portal, and there's support, and there's, um, and, and you're helping each other. You know, there's, there's a difference there. If something is cyclical and you never get beyond a certain point if you never you, you know what i'm saying if you it's like this with the energy i'm getting over here with that five of wands six of pentacles three of chalices is like you crash land in the desert and you you leave everyone behind and you're going to be the one to go walk and get help and you start walking in the desert i know you know i'm going for here 
and then you're walking, 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 and then you look in the distance and you, you walk and you come up and it's the wreckage and it's your people. How did that happen? Well, you have a gammy leg and you actually have been walking <laughs> in a slant and you made a big fucking donut circle back to the same spot. That's what that five of wands is giving me. So, those circular arguments. It's not the vibe. Coming back, you're not gonna go be, you're not gonna innovate a solution in the same energy that you're all twisted about it. And that needs like, if that really bothers you, just book a session with me. It'll be, it'll be, we'll get to it. We'll cut like to the quick of it. Um, but that's what I mean. Some circular thing. Last judgment, Ace of Swords. There's, there's, there's a conversation that is going to change the level of vibration. That's the difference. That's how you know if you're making progress. It's if you make progress, if it changes. Okay. Talk so much today. What's this guidance for my people? Ooh. We've got the hummingbird and the starling. Hummingbird. Bird. Hummingbird. Release what you've been carrying and lighten up. New joy is on the way. So things are about to get a lot easier for you. You're going to let go of worry. You're going to let go of feelings of rejection. You're going to let go of fears. You're going to let go of maybe even someone that's kind of like sucking the life out of you. What I don't like about that is that they're just tying up your energy. It's, you know, like they want to waste it. They might just want to waste your time. They might just want to waste you. They might just want it. They might just like seeing you get all worked up. They might think that that's a positive ego affirm. Like, wow, this dude's getting real worked up about this. That makes me feel pretty great about myself. I don't know, you know, but it's like, I don't like it. So release, release what you've been carrying. You might not be joys on the way. And then the starling. Now is the time to get out into the world and connect in authentic ways. New people. New energy. Because this is like a, this would be fine if it were, if you keep it fresh in your connection. You know, if, if you, you have friends and whomever that in your family and you're all of your people that everybody kind of grows and, and evolves and changes and people are not threatened by that in the group and people let each other grow and outgrow things and it's fine and then you won't be like this but there's some stagnant crusties so it's time to put those crusties behind get into the world and connect in authentic ways because that's the only that's how you see if you're going to connect with anyone and not in an authentic way, it's just like being honest and just uploading your consciousness to YouTube or TikTok, whatever. Oh, and you have the cardinal bottom of the deck. Stand tall and proud. See the leadership role unfolding ahead of you. Leadership roles. So someone's, someone's definitely going to be a leader in this situation. And trust yourself. Learn to trust yourself at this time. Because this, if you don't do this Ace of Swords, Last Judgment, if you don't have this talk, if you don't do this thing, if you don't, if you're not honest, if you're not authentic, if you don't make this, blah, 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 then it's like, it's these little pebbles that are going to, disrupt you it's the pebble in the shoe that brings you down it's like it's going to be the little things that end up that turned out to be the big things and then you'll realize that you've walked in a big circle but it didn't look like that in the moment because you didn't want to look at it i don't know you didn't cognitive bias i don't know um but I see more of a breakthrough, stronger breakthrough energy here. And this, I love this expansion inside. So you're going to be expanding inside and the internal validation, trusting yourself, making the decisions with your own life. 
Love you guys so great. Good care. I will check in on your energies next time, my loves. Guys, we are almost at a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. Can't believe it. Thank you guys so much for helping me get here. Um, it's just been such a crazy ride, you know. Once we past our first 100,000. We're almost at a million YouTube subscribers. How crazy. Make sure to share, like this video, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you hit the bell, and we're on our way to 1 billion, kajillion, kabugagalabillion, gazillion, zillion, kajillions subscribers on YouTube and just saving the world through psychic ability and energetic self-mastery. So thank you guys for a hundred billion trillion gazillion subscribers on youtube it has been so much fun empowering us all and until next time when we hit the i don't know <laughs> the google if subscriber many beautiful blessings upon all of your beautiful heads darlings.